Now we've come to the central topic of the class, defensive driving. We touched on the basic principles of defensive driving in lesson one. If you recall, I referred to three elements of defensive driving when facing the challenge of driving in a city. They were preparation, anticipation, and response. We'll be using that list, preparation, anticipation, and response as a framework for defensive driving in this class. In truth, there is no one approach that everyone uses. The National Safety Council lists these three elements as the keys to defensive driving. Recognize the hazard, understand the defense, and act correctly and in time. That's not a bad list, but it just covers how to respond and leaves off what you do to be ready to respond, preparation and anticipation. One of the most popular defensive driving systems was designed specifically for commercial vehicle drivers. It's known as the Smith system, developed by Harold Smith in the 1960s. The Smith system lists five keys to defensive driving. Let's take a look. Aim high in steering, which means look as far ahead as you can. Keep your eyes moving, which means don't stare in any one direction for more than a few seconds. Get the big picture, which means you have a general awareness of what's happening all around you. Make sure others see you, which is pretty self-explanatory. And leave yourself an out, which means keep the vehicle where there's room to stop or steer to escape danger. Again, a pretty good list but it doesn't deal very much with anticipation or response. It focuses mostly on the first step, preparation, which is a good place to start. So let's look at preparation. Defensive driving begins before you ever get into your car, pickup truck, or SUV. How prepared are you and your vehicle for the trip? Are you up to it? Is your vehicle? Think of it this way. How would you feel if an airline pilot started to taxi towards takeoff without ever going through the pre-flight checklist, without having the plane check for defects or fuel, without having had enough sleep, and without using a seat belt. If you were aware of any of those circumstances, most likely you'd demand to be let off the plane and maybe report the pilot to authorities. Flight is hazardous, of course, so the pilot knows how important it is to be prepared. Do you think driving is less hazardous? You've probably heard that you're more likely to be injured or killed in a car crash than in an airplane. It's because traveling on the ground is more dangerous than flying. It might be because airlines and airline pilots take preparations seriously before they fly. That means taking time to be sure the equipment is unlikely to malfunction, that you are in good condition to operate the controls and that you have charted the course you're going to take in advance. Here's a brief checklist you might want to consider before you get into your vehicle and start it up. Number one, check tires, lights, engine oil, wipers, and wiper fluid, or be sure you check them recently enough to know they're all okay. Number two, are you alert and aware? That means don't drive when alcohol or other substances affect functioning or when you're tired. Imagine you're taking an important exam where fatigue would be disastrous. And by the way, don't rely on self-assessment. Use information from reliable sources. In other words, if you've consumed more alcohol than the authorities consider safe but feel fine, rely on the authorities and not on how you feel. Let's continue with our pre-check list. Number three, pre-check for any items you might need while driving. That might be the address where you're heading, water, money for tolls, and so on. You don't want to stop paying attention to driving to look for something you need. Number four, be sure you know your route. Number five, set your radio, your GPS navigation system, and anything else before you go, again, so you can keep paying attention to your driving. Number six, Keep music at low to moderate levels. If there's a vehicle malfunction that will endanger your safety, the first warnings are often unusual noises. If there's a sound down the road that will warn you of danger, such as a train whistle, you want to be able to hear it. Number seven, keep unsecured material in the car to a minimum. Number eight, stay off the phone. Number nine, fasten your seatbelt and make sure everyone else has too.
Number 10. Check your mirrors, calm yourself, and only leave when you feel ready to go. If you or your vehicle aren't ready for the trip, you're at greater risk of being involved in a crash. Preparation continues once you hit the road. You need to be prepared to see a hazard before it becomes unavoidable. You also need to be prepared to react. That means keep your hands at 9 and 3 o'clock, not 10 and 2 like your dad may have told you. Maintain a safe following distance. Always have your headlights or whatever means you have set so you have at least 500 feet of visibility. Slow down considerably whenever you don't. Check your rear view mirror and side view mirrors often enough that there are no surprises behind you. Never brake without checking behind you first. Keep your eyes moving so that there are no surprises to the left or to the right. Be aware of blind spots and have a secondary means to check if they're clear. Look past the car in front of you. To remember the Smith system, it says aim high in steering. In the first slide that follows this video, we'll begin looking more deeply at how to keep your vehicle and yourself ready to take on the challenges of driving. As with lesson one, you'll be given a short test after a final video in this lesson. In lesson three, we'll look at anticipation as the key to defensive driving. At the heart of anticipation is communication, how to get the information you need to anticipate and react. Also, how to ensure that others are provided with the information they need to anticipate and react. We'll finish our look at defensive driving with response. That will include some tips about how to travel down our roadways so that you and those around you that share the road can be as safe as possible.